Hi, my name is Glenn Weinrib, and today we're going to examine the science of global warming. The main organization that studies this is called the IPCC, and they publish summary reports every few years. The centerpiece of their most recent report is shown here. It breaks global warming down into individual components called radiative forcings. Some of these make the planet warmer, while others make it colder. Together, they combine to produce a net effect, which is shown with a green bar. In a sense, the red bars are like blankets that wrap around the planet, where the thickness of each blanket is proportional to the length of each bar. This is not exactly what is happening, but close enough. The horizontal axis refers to the amount of additional heat that hits each square meter of Earth's surface on average over a year. This additional heat warms the planet and increases the average global temperature. For reference, the total incoming energy from the sun is about 340 watts per square meter. Hundreds of years ago, this was balanced by an equal amount of outgoing heat radiation. Put differently, the amount of warming was the same as the amount of cooling, and the Earth's climate was stable. Today, however, an extra 2.8 watts per square meter is warming the planet. That's about 1% of sunlight, since 2.8 divided by 340 is roughly 1%. Therefore, in theory, Roughly 1% of sunlight could be reflected back into outer space to offset the additional warming and prevent runaway climate change. To get a sense of what 1% looks like, we placed a white bar in this image and then made it 10% transparent, followed by 1%. As one can see, 1% is barely visible to the naked eye. Sunlight warms the planet's surface after passing through carbon dioxide in atmosphere. The planet then emits infrared heat radiation back into outer space. Carbon dioxide in atmosphere absorbs the outgoing radiation more than it absorbs the incoming visible light, and this causes the planet to become warmer. Also, additional warming is caused by fast side effects that unfold over days to months. An example is water vapor in atmosphere. More heat causes more vapor, which traps more heat. So the top bar refers to more absorption of heat due to carbon dioxide plus fast side effects due to greater temperatures. The length of this bar is determined by a formula. Now I know many people would rather visit the dentist and work with calculations, so we'll make this quick. The details are not important other than to say more carbon dioxide means more warming. The previous formula refers to warming that occurs quickly due to additional carbon dioxide. Also, there are things that occur slowly due to higher global temperatures. These are called slow climate feedbacks and some of them take decades or even centuries to unfold. An example is melting sea ice. Elevated temperatures from initial warming cause sea ice to melt, which leads to more sunlight being absorbed by ocean water, which leads to more warming. It can take many years for this to occur due to the thermal inertia of ocean water. Therefore, melting sea ice is considered to be a slow feedback. Other slow feedbacks include the release of greenhouse gases from thawing permafrost and the darkening of clouds over decades. With slow feedbacks, roughly one third of additional warming occurs within the first five years, another third over the next hundred years, and the final third over the following thousand years. This delayed response means the full effect of today's carbon dioxide will not be felt for many generations. Also, 
This implies a significant amount of future warming is already locked in due to past emissions. This is one reason why the MIT Climate Solutions Simulator is so gloomy. Hundreds of years ago, atmospheric carbon dioxide levels were about 280 parts per million. Today, they're around 425, and they're projected to reach 560 by the year 2075. In other words, roughly 50 years from now, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is expected to be twice that of pre-industrialized levels. If we double the concentration of carbon dioxide and hold it steady, then after a thousand years, slow climate feedbacks will eventually stabilize and the average global temperature will eventually settle on a new value. The amount of eventual temperature increase after doubling carbon dioxide is referred to as the Earth Climate Sensitivity Constant, or ECS. Some scientists believe ECS is 3 degrees Celsius, whereas others think it is closer to 5. A higher value would be bad, since it would mean tipping points will activate sooner. There's an additional component that we need to discuss. It's outgoing heat radiation that cools the planet and offsets the radiative forces. We asked AI to illustrate this, and here's what it came up with. Okay, not bad for a computer. Outgoing heat radiation is roughly proportional to the average temperature of the planet and inversely proportional to the Earth climate sensitivity constant. Earth's temperature is mostly controlled by two energy flows, one that warms the planet and one that cools it. These offset each other to produce net warming or net cooling. This net effect is referred to as the Earth energy imbalance, and it's roughly proportional to the global warming rate. The global warming rate is currently at 0.3 degrees Celsius per decade. There's a feedback mechanism built into the planet that causes it to eventually settle on an equilibrium temperature, which is sometimes referred to as the set point temperature. The set point is determined by the concentration of carbon dioxide in atmosphere, as shown by this formula. In summary, the set point increases when the concentration of carbon dioxide increases. If we subtract the current temperature, from the set point, we get warming that has not yet been realized. As noted previously, it takes about a thousand years for warming to stabilize after adding carbon dioxide. Therefore, we can calculate how much additional warming would occur if we pegged the concentration of carbon dioxide at its current level. According to one calculation, the amount of unrealized warming is currently 1.2 degrees Celsius. To understand Earth's climate, it helps to think about the household thermostat. This device works with two key variables. One is temperature, and the other is energy flow. Temperature is often represented in units of degrees Celsius, while energy flow is often represented in units of watts. The energy flow can be broken down into two primary components. One is external and somewhat constant, while the other is variable and maintains the temperature of a system. In a house, the external energy flow comes from the outdoors through the walls, while the variable energy flow comes from the heating and air conditioning system. After these two combine, a net energy flows into or out of the system. If energy flows in, the system gets warmer, and if energy flows out, the system gets colder. If the energy that flows in matches the energy that flows out, then the net energy flow is zero and the temperature remains constant. It follows that the net energy flow is roughly proportional to the warming rate, which is the change in temperature over a period of time. In the case of the planet, the net energy flow is like the Earth energy imbalance, 
the outdoor energy is like the radiative forcings and the HVAC system is like the Earth's outgoing heat radiation. If we take the Earth's energy imbalance equation and substitute in other formulas, we get an equation that describes Earth's thermostat. The details are not important other than to say if the current global temperature is less than the set point temperature, energy flows in and warms the planet. To get a better sense of this, we can look at an example scenario that begins 150 years ago, before global warming. At this time, the Earth energy imbalance, which refers to warming, is zero, and the first term equals the second term. Now let's assume the concentration of carbon dioxide in atmosphere increases by 10 parts per million. The temperature has not yet changed, but we now have some energy imbalance, which means energy flows in and causes the temperature to increase. Warming occurs until the set point is reached, at which time the first term would equal the second term and warming would stop. This equation is another way of saying the concentration of carbon dioxide in atmosphere sets the average global temperature in a manner similar to that done with a home thermostat. Carbon dioxide is a tiny molecule that has a profound impact on our planet. And all of this might seem crazy, but this is how it works. Okay, that's it for me, and I'll talk to y'all real soon.